Hi friends, welcome to my channel. In today's session, we are going to discuss about CRUD operations in ASP.NET Core MVC by using ADO.NET. Here we are not going to use Entity Framework. We are going to use Stored Procedure to perform the CRUD operations. So this is the previous example where we have performed CRUD operations by using Entity Framework Core Code First Approach. So the same example we are going to perform CRUD operations by using Stored Procedures. Before continuing with this session, I would request you all please subscribe to my channel and click on bell icon for notification alerts. I'm going to use Visual Studio 2022 for this example and, and database I'm going to use SQL Server 2019. I'm going to create new project for this. I'm selecting ASP.NET Core web application with model view controller. We are going to create MVC project here so this is my project name I'm going to store in this location click on next I'm going to use latest framework here I'm going to select HTTPS if you want you can uncheck so that you can use the HTTP protocol So our project has been created here. So I have multiple project under the same solution. I am going to set this project as starter project. Right click on this project. Set as starter project. And here I am going to create one model. This is my employee model I am creating here. Here we have to declare our properties. Before that we will create table for employee in our SQL server. This is my database server. Here I am going to create new database. This is my database name. Click on OK. So my database has been created here. We will create a new table. Click on new query. So this is the table I am going to create it. This is my table name. Here I am taking ID as primary key and it will be identity. First name, last name, date of birth and email salary. So we are going to create employees table with these fields. ID will be primary key so we no need to pass any data here because it's identity automatically it will increment with one execute here so our table is created to perform CRUD operations our model should match with these fields here I'm creating properties ID this will be primary key so we have to import namespace here first name So these are all the fields we have created in our database. 
first name will be mandatory for this we have to decorate with required field so that we can validate at the time of form submission last name also mandatory date of birth also i want to change display name here while displaying in the view it will be displayed like first name same thing i'm going to copy it here this will be last name Here while displaying we are not going to display first name and last name both fields. We are going to join both first name and last name we will display in the index page. For that I will create one more property. This will be string. This will be full name. And here I am going to join first name and last name it will return first name here we will add one space then last name and also we no need to map these fields otherwise we will get the modal validation errors for that we have to decorate with not mapped now we have to create a connection string for this open app settings.json already in our previous example we use the connection string app settings.json you can copy it from here so here we have to change our database so this is our database name in previous example we have created all these things how to create connection string and how to read the connection string and all if you are new to my channel please watch my previous video video link will be shared in the description now to perform the crowd operations we have to create stored procedures click on new query first we will create a stored procedure to read all employees create Here I am mentioning schema name. Here I am defining as USP. It is a user defined stored procedure. Here we have to write our select query select store from dbo dot employees. With no log. Here instead of specifying all, we will specify ID, first name, last name, date of birth. So instead of specifying all here, we can specify required field names. This will be the best practice in SQL Server. You can execute now. Our store procedure is created here. You can select the store procedure name and click on execute. Currently we don't have data that's why the data is not displayed here. We are going to create one more stored procedure to read the data based on ID. Read. I will make it as get by ID. I am going to copy it get employee by id 
here we have to pass where condition where id equal to here we have to pass one parameter I will declare parameter here at the rate id data type will be integer here we have to declare the data type this is the input parameter we are expecting from the user and here we have to pass that id so select this and execute it so one more stored procedure is created here and we need another stored procedure to insert the data insert here i am going to create i'll copy the same thing this will be insert employee here we need parameter like first name we can copy it here first name last name date of birth and here we have to declare data types it will be vacar of 50 this length should match with our table structure you can check it here vacar of 50 and last name also it's 50 and date of birth and data type and length of the data type should match with our table so last name also 50 and date of birth is date and email is 50 characters and salary is float so now we can insert insert into so this is our table name you have to pass all field names which we need to insert and values we have to pass it here values i'll copy it from here this order should match first field will be first name then it should be first name here last name date of birth email and salary it should match with the columns which we mentioned in the insert query these are all the columns these are all the values which we are expecting from the user select this store procedure execute it it's created then we have to create another stored procedure to update the data this is going to be update here along with this first name last name date of birth email and salary we need another input id so based on id only we are going to update the row id this data type will be integer so before updating we have to check whether that id is valid or not for that i'll declare one variable here integer i'll set the value as zero first i have to check whether the data is available with that id or not for that i'll write a select query here select here we have to pause id 
whether this id is valid or not we have to check for that we are writing the select query where we are validating this id so if any data is available we will get one here otherwise we will get the zero so if it is one then only we will update the data otherwise we will not update it and one more thing we have to add here is we have to check is there any error in the query for that i will try begin try and i will add it as entry so like in c shop how we will write try catch here sql also we can use the try catch here here i have to write begin catch and end catch here i can roll back the transaction if there is any error suppose if row count is greater than 0 that means this id is valid then i have to update the record begin transaction commit transaction here we have to write our update query update employees set here we have to update the values i'll copy these things here and we have to pause where condition here where id equal to at the rate id here we have to pause comma yes like this in insert query also we have to check is there any error for that begin try and it's going to end here and try begin catch and end catch if there is any error then roll back the transaction begin transaction and after inserting we have to commit the transaction so we have to alter this execute it now we have to create update one execute it and finally we have to write another stored procedure for deletion i'll write it here delete here we are going to pass only id to delete the record so here also i'm going to check row count if row count is greater than zero then only i'm going to delete the data delete from table where id is passed by the user execute all our stored procedures are ready now now here i am going to create one folder for data access layer data access layer I'll create a class for data access I'll make it as employee dal 
firstly here I need SQL connection for this we have to import the namespace and you can install the latest version I need SQL command also I'm declaring SQL connection and SQL command here and I need one property for configuration to read the connection string here we are going to create a method to read the connection string private it will return the string get connection string where builder configuration builder from app settings.json we are going to read the connection string for that I am creating base path here which will be directory dot get current directory from here we have to pass the json file add json file I am copying this name I am pausing this we have to build it here to read the connection string now here we can get configuration dot get connection string here we have to pass connection string name this is our connection string name here we will get connection string here I am going to create one method to read the employees which will return list of employees here I am going to pass employee get all so it will return all the employees here I am declaring list of employees it will be employee list here we have to pass connection we have to pass the connection string we have to pass command now create command We have to define command type here then we have to define command text so in our case our store procedure name we have to pause it here to read all employees this is the store procedure we are using we have to paste it here this no need of system dot data now we have to open the connection here we have to import namespace system dot data now we have to read the sql data for that we will use sql data reader So if there is any data is available then it will comes into our while loop and here we are going to read all employees one by one and we will attach to our list of employees 
here we will get employee id it will be id first name last name date of birth email and finally salary also here we have to convert so because this id is integer so we have to convert into integer for that convert I'm converting into integer and string I will convert into to string this is also string and email also string this I'm going to convert as date time and from this we need only date and this one will be float we have to convert it double so finally we have to attach this to employee list we have to add add pass the employee finally we have to return employee list here after reading the data we have to close the connection here we have to pass command dot execute reader not this one command dot execute reader here we will create a controller to read the data go to controllers create a controller here I am going to create one empty controller here add I will name it as employee controller so this is my employee controller I'll call employee dial which is going to be data access layer and I can make it as private read only and here I will generate the constructor for this now here I am going to read the data from data access layer so by default this is going to be get if you want you can decorate with http get here it will return list of employees for that i am making as employee list here get all here i am going to make it I'll keep this inside try catch block so that if there is any unhandled exceptions are there we can find it easily surround with try catch block so if there is any error we have to display to user for that I'll store it in temp data this is going to be error message I'm pausing exception dot message here if the data is available then we have to pause employees to view I'll create a view here right click on the action method add view click on riser view empty add I'm going to make it as index 
here in this session we are not going to design any of the view because last session we already explained how to create views manually step by step if you are new to my channel please watch my previous video video link will be shared in the description this is the view which we used in the previous session i'm going to change the model name alone employee and nothing here here if there is any error message we are storing in the temp data like which we are shown here and if there is any error message we are going to read it here so if it is not null then we are going to display in the index page like that if there is any success message if you want to display here we can read here and we can display in the index page so this is what we explained step by step in the previous session if you want you can watch that video that will be shared in the video description so this is simple table created these are all the table header and this is the table body also here we can validate model is not equal to null and model dot any so if model contains any data then only we have to display it here so if there is no data is no employees available at this moment this message will be displayed in the table build the application once so there is one error here so here this namespace we used with previous sessions example that is crud with code first here we have to change that that will be crud with edivo.net that was the error here build the application so builds succeeded here i am going to change it to ias run the application here we have to call our controller that is employee controller enter it so here there is a error so while attempting to activate our employee dial there is a error here we missed one thing here we have to add employee dial to our program.cs we have to register it here builder dot services here we have to pass our employee dial run the application now here we have to add namespace dal we will add employee master to navigation menu for that i'll go to shared folder layout here we will add one nav item employee controller the action will be index this name will be employee master so i will click on employee master it's coming to my index action method will keep one debug point here also in our data access layer here 
here we are able to read our connection string currently we don't have any data that's why it's not returning any employees so there is no employees that's why we are displaying messages like no employees available at this moment we will try to insert some dummy entries from backend for testing purpose we are entering few dummy entries from database so id will be identity column and primary key we no need to insert any values here first name i will make it as david saving here we we'll go to application this time I will cancel all the debug points I will disable it and click on employee master continue now we are able to read the data from the database here I am going to create one action method to insert the data public it is going to be create and here first we have to design the viewport for here it will be empty view right click add view create a empty razor view this is going to be create create the same example we are going to do it with adivo.net that's why i'm not going to explain about this view part view part already we explained in the code first approach session here i'm going to change my project name it is going to be adivo.net and my model will be employee model so this is only one change remaining things we no need to change because we are going to use same things here here we have to create another action method for post the data here it will receive the employee model i'll make it as model here from controller to data access layer we have to pass the model for that we have to create one method public it will return the bool insert this is going to be method to insert the data so here we will receive the data as model here if it is successfully inserted we will return as true otherwise we will return as false using here we have to pass connection we have to get the connection string Here we have to pass command type. So this is our stored procedure name to insert the data. I'm copying from here. Here we have to pass parameters along with values. 
first parameter will be first name which will be received from which we can receive it from model dot first name last name then date of birth this is not required finally we have to open the connection to perform the insert operation execute non query and once it is executed we have to close the connection so finally we have to return if it is successfully inserted we have to return as true otherwise we have to return as false for that i will declare a local variable here which is id 0 so i am going to store the id here as once it is data is successfully inserted we will get as 1 otherwise we will get as 0 here we have to return the boolean value true or false for that if id is greater than 0 then i am going to make it as true otherwise it will be false so this is i am going to return so now we can call this from our controller go to the controller from here we can call our insert method so before inserting the data we have to check the model state is valid or not if model state is valid first we will check if it is not valid then we have to display the error message to the user model data is invalid so this is the message we will display to the user else we have to insert the data so which will be returning true or false we will store it in result dal dot insert here we have to pass model suppose if it is not inserted then we will return as false in that case we have to return message as error message unable to save the data this is the message i am going to display and i will return to the same view else i can save it in data that is success message employee details saved this is a message we are going to display if it is inserted successfully so finally I am going to return to if it is successfully inserted then I am going to redirect into index view now run the application click on create employee button so this is the view for creating a new employee so without entering any data we will try to submit it so all the validations are working fine submitting here so employee details saved this bootstrap alert we have implemented in the previous sessions also we have implemented after 
seconds this should close automatically that is not working because we have to implement our javascript functionality here if you close it here it will be closed for that we have to call one javascript function which we have to implement it here in previous example we have implemented in the code first approach so i'm going to take it from that so this is the custom js we used i'll copy it from here and i can paste it inside our advo.net project i'll paste it here we set the timeout for 5 seconds after 5 seconds this alert will be closed automatically this we have to add it inside the shared layout folder we have to go here and you can drag it you can drop it here we will run the application again Now this alert should close automatically after 5 seconds. Yeah, it's closing and it's working fine. We will create another employee. So this message will be displayed and after 5 seconds it will close automatically and if you want you can close manually also. In previous session we have missed to add the try catch block to the create action method. For that I am going to select entire code here, right click, go to the snippet, surround with, here I am going to add ex and I am going to add this exception message here so if there is any exception it is going to return to the same view which is create view to update the data we have to create two action methods one is to get the data based on the id another one is post action method to update the data first we will create a get action method to get the data based on id this is going to be edit and I will pause ID here to read the employee data based on ID we have to create one method for reading the data based on the ID here we have to create one method to read the data based on the ID I am going to copy this method I am going to reuse it here this will be get by ID this will return only single employee so we don't want list here it should be employee so based on id we will get only one employee here here we have to pass the stored procedure to read the data based on the id for this we have created all the stored procedure in previous sessions so we have to copy the stored procedure name this will return employee details based on the id i replace here and we have to pass one parameter here that is id add with value this is the parameter name and value will be id here it will give the employee details and this is not required here here it is going to return the employee here we are going to pass the employee id to the stored procedure based on this id it will filter the data and it will return the employee details here 
and finally we are going to return the employee here now we can call this from our controller employee get by id and here it will expect id here we have to validate whether employee data is available or not if employee dot id is zero that means there is no data in the database with that id then we have to pass the message as error Here we can define the id also id so if there is no data with the id which is passed by the user then we have to display the message like employee details not found with id which is passed by the user so this is going to be returned to the index action method else it will return to edit view with the employee details we have to keep entire things in try catch block if there is any exception we have to display this to user also we have to create another action method for post i'm going to copy this this will be post and here we have to pass the employee model these things we have to change it suppose model state is not valid we have to validate that then we have to display this message to the user already we used here model data is invalid we will use the same thing here and it will be returned to the view yeah. else we have to pass this data to data access layer for that we have to create one action method for update so we can reuse this insert method copying here we can paste it and I will make it as update so we have to pass stored procedure name here so this is the stored procedure name which we used for update so in previous sessions we have created all these stored procedures if you are new to my channel please watch my previous videos and please subscribe to my channel also we have to pass one more parameter here called id to update the data so this is the update method which is going to return bool so here we are passing the update stored procedure and along with all the input parameters so once it is executed we will get true or false so based on that we are going to display the message to the user here result here we have to call the dial dot update method and we have to pass the model so that here we will receive true or false if say false then we have to display the message like unable to update the data already we used for create same thing we can reuse it here unable to update the data if it is success then employee details updated so 
so these are all the validations we are going to implement it here here we have to remove this block so if result is false we are going to display this message like unable to update the data if it is success that means if it is result is true then we are going to display as employee details updated and finally once it is updated then we are going to redirect to index view now run the application so it is displaying all the details in the edit here i am going to change mic and date of birth i will make it as 1987 and salary i will make it as 66000 update it so employee details updated you can see this details has been changed here so edit functionality is working as we expected first we will create a method to delete the data from database for that i am going to reuse update method before continuing this session please watch my previous video which we explained about adivo.net and how to read the data insert update data under we have explained in the previous sessions please watch previous videos first so this i am making as delete method and here we no need of passing entire employee model because we are going to pass id parameter to delete the data from database so we can remove all these parameters since we are going to pass only id parameter as a input so we are going to delete remaining parameters here i'm going to pass only id to delete the data once this query is executed we will get number of rows affected that is one in our case we will get it as one then if it is one then we are passing as true that is record is deleted true otherwise we will send it as false here now we will implement this method in employee controller i'm going to copy these two here because it is similar to update functionality so i'm going to copy the edit functionality i'll make it as delete here so based on the id we are going to get the data from the employee table if id is zero then we are going to display the error message as employee details not found with the id which is given by the user and we are going to redirect this to index action method that is index view if data is available then we will return to delete view if there is any error we are going to show the error message from the exception so here we are going to create another action method for delete confirmation so once it is confirmed then only we have to delete the data so this is the action method which we are going to use it for view purpose this is the action method which we are going to use it to post the data to the data access layer here we will receive the employee model here we no need to validate any model state here i can remove it here here i can check for delete now so here i can pause it id alone if result is false then we are going to display as unable to delete the data if it is success then employee details deleted this is the message which we are going to display to the user and if there is any error here then we are going to display in the error message with temp data so we will create a view for delete now right click on the action method add view Here I'm going to make it as delete. I'm going 
going to remove and here the delete design we are going to use it from our previous example which we used for code first approach I'll copy it from here here I have to change the project reference and my model name will be employee so this is the title we are going to display to the form that is delete employee and if there is any error message we are going to store into the variable as error message and we are going to display in the bootstrap alert here so this is simple form which, which we are going to use it for delete purpose here we no need of this margin bottom I'll run the application so there is some error here okay we can't use already we declared ID here so we can't use it as ID so we will make it as can make it as deleted row count here after executing this non query we will get number of rows affected that will be one in our case because we are passing only single ID so that one record will be deleted and we will get it as one I'll run it now click on employee master so this record I am going to delete now click on delete so based on the ID it is displaying the employee details here suppose I am making ID as 20 so employee details not found with ID 20 so I will delete again now click on delete So it's redirecting again to delete here we have to change it here we have to change action name also because it is here we have provided as delete on post it's redirecting to delete so we have to change the action name also here it's going to be delete I'll run the application again first we'll check the employee details which are available in the database first So currently we have two records we are going to delete the record which is having id2 go to the employee monster click on delete we have disabled all the values here we no need to edit the data here that's why we disabled all the controls click on delete so here we have not changed the stored procedure name because this is again i will click it here so this is still exist as update employee we have to change the stored procedure name here go to the data access layer here we have to update our stored procedure name so this is stored procedure name which we used for delete the record I'm going to paste it here I'm going to delete this record now click on delete so this is the record ID is 1 so this is the record which we have ID 1 click on delete 
employee details deleted currently we don't have any employees here we can create another employee click on submit so employee details saved again we will try to delete this record click on delete this is record which we are going to delete click on delete employee details deleted we will check the DB we don't have any records here so like this we can perform the CRUD operations in ASP.NET Core by using ADO.NET that's it for today if you like this video please like and subscribe to my channel thanks for watching